Hello everybody and welcome to exercise one. We are looking at page 24 of the workbook. And now that we have the definition of linear dependence and independence behind us, we're ready to do some examples. So let's, let's read this exercise together. So I'd like us to consider the set S. Okay, it's a set of three polynomials. And they're asking, is this set linearly independent? Okay, so conceptually, that's, that's just asking us, um, are those, are those polynomials really independent from each other, or is it possible to take one of the polynomials and write it as a combination of the others? Okay, we're just trying to decide which of those two situations we're in. Okay, and according to our definition of linear independence, we can always answer a question by, like that by starting here, forming a linear combination of the things in our set and setting it equal to the zero vector. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll take a times x squared minus 2x plus 4 plus b times 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 okay, plus c times negative 2x plus 2 and we'll set it equal to the zero vector. Now one question we might ask here is what is the zero vector in our vector space? Okay, well our vector space is p of r so when we write zero vector we mean the zero polynomial here. Okay, we'll just kind of keep that in mind as we're doing this problem. Okay, and at this point, we'd probably want to algebraically simplify this. I'm, I'm going to skip a few of the algebra steps here since we've, we've, we did a little bit of this in the last section. So if you multiply the a, b, and the c through and regroup all of the terms, okay, if you group all of the x squareds together, you're going to get a plus 2b well, actually, let's, let's do one of the algebra steps together just so we don't leave out too many details here. So ax squared minus 2ax plus 4a plus 2bx squared minus 3bx plus 7b minus 2cx plus 2c okay, is equal to the zero vector. And we emphasize that that's the zero polynomial. So I'm going to emphasize that by writing 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. Okay, the zero polynomial is just a polynomial where all the coefficients are zero. Okay, and now, what do we do with the left-hand side of this equation? Well, a convenient thing to do would be to group it according to um, powers of x. So, for example, we've got an ax squared and a 2bx squared. We can put those together and write it as a plus 2b times x squared. Okay, and then we could ask, what about all the x terms? Okay, well, there are a few of those, and so we'll group all of those together and write it as, let's see, negative 2a minus 3b minus 2cx. Okay, and then finally, we'll group the constant terms together. We've got a 4a plus a 7b plus a 2c. Okay, all of that's equal to 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. Okay, and we'd like to solve that, e that, that, that system of equations. Okay, we can do that by just noting that if we want the right and the left-hand side to be the same polynomial, then we need, for example, a plus 2b to equal 0. Okay, and we also need negative 2a minus 3b minus 2c to equal 0. And then finally, we need 4a plus 7b plus 2c equal to 0. That's a system of equations. And if we wrote it down and put it into matrix form, here's what we'd get. 1, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, 4, 7, 2. And on the right-hand side, we would have 0, 0, and 0. Okay, you can confirm that step and convince yourself okay, that that really is the system of equations that we explained up here. Okay, we want to solve that for a, b, and c. Okay, so at this point, we would do row reduction. Okay, and I want to emphasize at this point that you're welcome to do row reduction by hand if you want to. Probably for this system, it would not be too bad to do it by hand, but I want you to also feel free to use technology. If you've got a calculator that does this, or if you know an app online that does row reduction, feel free to use it. I mean, the point here is more about interpreting our echelon matrix than it is about doing the, the row operations. Okay, so that said, 
if you do row operations here, uh, we've got our first pivot position up here. We want to get zeros below that. So we could first take 2 times the first row and add it to the second row. That's going to give us that. And I'm leaving it to you to kind of check that or to um, maybe do this on your calculator and check it. And then finally, um, if we take negative 4 times the first row and add it to the third row, we're going to get a 0 here. And continuing, we would get this row. Okay, and then we'd... We're kind of done with the first column now. We got another pivot position there, and we'd like to get a zero below that. Okay, so the first two rows are going to stay the same. Okay, and notice that we can get a zero here by just adding the second and the third row. So we'll get all zeros as it turns out. Okay, and let's circle the pivot positions in our in our echelon matrix. Okay, there they are. Notice that we get a row of zeros at the bottom, so we have a free variable in this position. Okay, and so here's the thing. The fact that there's a free variable allows us, if we think about it right, to answer this question rather quickly. Is this linearly independent? Well, it's about asking the question, are there non-trivial solutions to the system of equations? Well, if C is a free variable, we can let C be anything we want, including a non-zero number. So having a free variable automatically means that we have non-trivial solutions. Okay, so I'm going to write down in words what I just said there. Okay, since C is a free variable, and it can be anything that we want it to be, okay, including non-zero values, the above system must have non-trivial solutions. Okay, and having non-trivial solutions means that our vectors are linearly dependent. Here's the answer to our question. I'd like to go a little bit deeper into this, though, even though they didn't ask us this. If S is really a linearly dependent set, what does that mean again? Well, linear dependence means that it should be possible to take one of the polynomials in, in our set S and write it as a linear combination of the other two. I'd like to see if we can do that, okay, using the calculations that we did. So in other words, there should be a dependence relation that we can find. Okay, let's see if I can spell that right. All right, and what we can do to find a dependence relation is just to start with our free variable. We know that C can be anything, so let's choose a non-zero value for that. Okay, so we'll let C equal 1. Okay, and then go back to our system. Okay, and it's most helpful probably to look at the um, echelon form of this. Okay, so starting with the second equation here, that would, if we wrote it out, it would look like b minus 2c equals 0. Okay, we can take that and solve it for b. Okay, so b is equal to 2c, which is going to be 2 because we chose the value of 1 for c. Okay, and then going up to the first equation, that if we read it off looks like a plus 2b equals 0. So a is negative 2b, okay, which is negative 2. All right, so what we've, what we've come up with then is a value for a, b, and c, these three numbers. And so we know then that if we substitute those three numbers into this first equation that we wrote down, that has to be a true statement. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so um, let's see, can I get that in the screen? Yeah, just barely. Okay, so again, we're going to go up here and just substitute in the a, b, and the c. a is negative 2. Okay, b is 2. And finally, c is 1. 
is equal to the zero vector. Okay, and this is what's known as a dependence relation. Okay, you can actually multiply all of that out and confirm that this is a true statement. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I just noticed an error. Um, okay, where is it? Oh, yes. Okay, sorry, back up here. I just noticed it in the nick of time here. Okay, so backing up to A equals negative 2B, let's fix that. B is actually equal to 2. Okay, so negative 2B is negative 4. I, yeah, I apologize for that. So that's going to change things a little bit here. This negative 2 is actually going to turn into a negative 4. Okay, there we go. I was thinking the whole time something doesn't seem quite right here. Okay, so with that, with that little fix here, this is our dependence relation. And notice that it would be possible to take this formula and to solve it for one of the vectors in terms of the other two. For example, we could isolate negative 2x plus 2 by throwing the other two um, terms on the other side, and we would have written negative 2x plus 2 as a linear combination of the other two polynomials.